Hey traders, I'm Champion Trader Kevin Davey and today I'm going to show you an algo for Swiss franc futures. And here's what its performance has looked like since it went live after development. So let's get started. Okay, today I'm going to go over a Swiss franc futures trading strategy. Now, if you want details on trading Swiss franc futures, you can go to the CME group and there's the website link and you can learn all about the futures market for Swiss franc. Now, the symbol in trade station is SF. The continuous contract is at SF. Some data vendors use 6S as the symbol. So you'll see some differences depending on what data vendor you use. And f based on a full point, it's $125,000 per point. Obviously, it doesn't move that much. It always moves in fractions of a point out to like the fourth decimal place. But overall, the contract has a notional value about $143,000 now. The scary thing about the Swiss franc and something you should keep in mind is even though now it's not as volatile, there was a time where the volatility of the Swiss franc was gigantic. And this goes back to 2015. In uh, January 2015, the Swiss National Bank used to have the Swiss franc pegged to the euro. And it was like that for quite a while. And, the, and a lot of people would trade based on that. Anytime it would get out of whack with the euro, they would make a trade and it would come back. And then what happened on January 15th, 2015, the Swiss bank decided, ah, we're just going to release the peg and, and not have it active anymore. And what ended up happening is in one 60-minute bar, there was a $21,000 increase in the price for one contract. I mean, that's a huge amount of movement. And actually, it was in a lot less than 60 minutes. I just wanted to show you a bigger scale bar. If you look at one minute bars, it actually jumped up, stopped trading, jumped up again, stopped trading, jumped up again. And so it was very hard to even get out of the market if you were short. Of course, if you were long, you would have just stayed in. But I wanted to point this out because a lot of people think, well, currencies, you know, they're pretty stable. They're not going to be anything crazy. No, crazy things can and do happen in the currency markets. And now, granted, this was eight years ago, not almost nine years ago now, but it did happen and it wiped a ton of people out, okay, um, both trading futures and also trading Forex pairs. And what happened, it also wiped out a lot of brokerages, of Forex brokerages, because they just, you know, if you had a stop order, it was just going to get blown away. It wasn't going to get filled. So I just wanted to show you that just to be aware that sometimes you think, oh, well, this is a pretty uh, benign instrument to trade. There could be a lot of hidden danger. And this is one that definitely had at least one day of extreme danger. Okay, so if we set up this chart, <clears throat> I'm doing uh, SF, I'm doing 24-hour bars. The market's really open 23 hours, but it doesn't matter for the bar size, so that's 14, 40-minute bars. Pretty straightforward. And here I'll show you visually how it's going to take trades, and then we'll go through the code. So this is going to be based on uh, Bollinger Bands, but actually a reverse Bollinger Band. And it's also going to include the long-term trend that's measured by the 200 bar momentum. And momentum, of course, is just the price today minus the price 200 bars ago. So that difference, if it's down or up, it will help us decide the trade. So here's our signal bar for one of the sample trades. And what we had before this is we had a 200 bar downtrend and you can see the bars before at least about the first fifth the last 50 bars that it was in a downtrend so that's part of it 
And then the second part is we have a close above the lower Bollinger Band, which is shown in red. So once we had a close above that, and that happened, though both those things were true on the signal bar, then you buy the next bar at open. And you can see that the strategy did that. The exact opposite holds true for short trades. So you can see over on the far left over here, there's a short trade where the price went below the upper Bollinger Band. And you can't tell here, but this was also a 200 bar uptrend. So both of those were satisfied and then it went short. So that's kind of how it's set up. If you look at the code, this is trade station code, easy language. You should be able to uh, pretty easily follow this. So the first part is your 200 bar momentum. It's saying if the close is greater than the close 200 bars ago, or the momentum is greater than zero, it's the same thing. If that's true and the close crosses below the Bollinger Band, it's a 30 bar Bollinger Band, and the Bollinger Band uh, width is 1.5 standard deviations uh, then you sell short and the exact opposite holds true for buying which is what I like to do in a lot of markets I like to have symmetric entries and exits helps reduce the amount of curve fitting and it also uh, is just a nice way to ensure you have both long and short trades so it's kind of different than your normal Bollinger Band or how people look at a lot of times. This is actually trying to catch like a peak or trying to catch a bottom. And then for exits, instead of a, a stop loss or profit target, which I mentioned you know, during that 2015 episode, if you had a stop order in the market, it probably would never have been filled or it would have been filled at a terrible price. So what this does is this just looks at the open position profit or uh, or at the close of each bar and it looks at it in two ways both if a loss is below fifteen hundred dollars or if the profits above fifteen hundred dollars then at the next bar open you'll exit that position so it's not exactly a stop loss or a profit target because it's based on the closing prices but it will get you out of the market uh, at some point once your targets are hit so that's it that's the whole code here and if you look at the equity curve you can see here's what it looks like and the area in blue again is since the strategy went live so everything in the white was during the development phase of this and then it's been running uh, almost two years now running live and you can see it has ups and downs it's definitely not a smooth equity curve um, but it has been making a decent return adjusted or risk adjusted returns so it's been doing pretty well here's a performance report summary it just shows that it's been making money on the long side and the short side which is always nice to see because you never know what the market's going to do in the future so you like to be positioned to make money on the long side and the short side it has about the same number of trades long and short too okay uh, i wanted to show this just as an example of what it's doing and how it doesn't work sometimes you can see there's a short trade gets stopped out there's another short trade gets stopped out then there's a third short trade and then that ends up being profitable. You can see in each case, it thinks there's a peak and it's coming off a peak. And so that's why it goes short. And if the market continues to go up, well, then you're going to get stopped out. So this was a good example. You get stopped out, you get stopped out. And then the third time ended up working in your favor. Like I said, it tries to catch the turning points and it doesn't always succeed and that's an important feature uh, to realize in any trading system don't look for a system to always make money no system's going to make money all the time there's going to be losing phases to any trading strategy okay uh and 
just to go back to that 2015, and you might say, well, hey, that's nine years ago. I think it's important to see what happens during these events because these events can easily be account killers. Uh, you know, a $20,000 move in, in a very short period of time per contract could really wipe out most people's accounts. So you got to be careful here. And you can see it was actually flat during this particular event. Um, and that's probably one good thing about this strategy is it's only in the market 29% of the time. So most of the time it's just sitting on the sidelines waiting for these turning points. And when it sees it, then it jumps in. So, uh, you know, a lot of people like systems that aren't in the market a whole lot and they're on the sidelines. And the neat thing about that is if you have five or ten different strategies for different markets and they're all in a little bit, you can usually get by with less trading capital because you're not in a whole bunch of positions all the time. You're in select positions and you're kind of targeting your trading. So that's kind of neat. I have a walk forward version of the strategy and the equity curve there is shown on the right. It's just a different version of the same strategy, the same logic. And that's something, the walk, uh, the walk forward is something I teach in my strategy factory workshop. It's one of the steps in my process. It's an important step and it's one, if you do it correctly, it can really give you a good idea of how a trading strategy is going to perform. And if you want more information, on my workshop there's a link in the description you can also go to my website and you'll find my workshop information there so that's it if you have any comments questions concerns let me know just send me an email put a comment in the video I, I respond to all comments remember to subscribe hit the like button I'll keep making more of these have a great day. I'm Champion Trader Kevin Davey, and happy trading.